Another jaw-dropping case, in 2022, scientists managed to teach a collection of human and mouse neurons in a dish to play the video game Pong. Yes, you heard that right. Brain cells in a Petri dish playing Pong. How? Similar principle, they grew about 800,000 neurons on an array of electrodes and connected the setup to a computer running a simple Pong game. The neurons got feedback signals representing the game world, like whether the paddle missed the ball or not, and over time they actually learned to control the virtual paddle to hit the ball. They weren't told the rules. Through feedback, the neuronal network cell organized to perform the task. After a while, the dish-born mini-brain was playing Pong, not at championship level but definitely above chance. This system, nicknamed Dish Brain, gave researchers insight into how neurons learn and also served as a very, very rudimentary example of a thinking, acting entity that's a mix of biology and simulation. The neurons were essentially embodied in the Pong game. That was their world. This experiment is like a tiny microcosm of the brain in a vat concept. The neurons experienced the Pong world through electrical signals and responded responded to it, presumably with no awareness that their reality was just a two-dimensional game. These examples show the technical and theoretical pieces coming together. We can keep a brain alive outside a body, we can feed information into brains and get information out, we can even let a brain or neural network interact with a virtual or robotic environment. It's not hard to imagine that as technology progresses, we could do this on the scale of a human brain. If one day, you could scan or transpose someone's entire brain signals to a machine and back, you might effectively upload them to a virtual world or grant a disembodied brain a virtual body. Scientists and futurists call this whole brain emulation or mind uploading. It remains speculative, but groups are working on the pieces. The Blue Brain Project and other neuroscientific efforts are trying to simulate brain circuitry. Basically, the, what we think must be happening is the neurons are growing as physically independent of each other as possible. They're just expressing themselves, uh, saying, I'm, I want this shape, this is my shape, and I'm going to grow like this. And then when they've all grown together, it's, they just take what they get when they bump into each other. The field of connectomics is mapping every connection in brains, so far only fully for tiny worm brains, but they're attempting mice, and ultimately humans, perhaps. If you have the complete map and a powerful enough computer, in theory you could simulate a person's brain, then you wouldn't even need the biological brain. The simulation itself would be the brain in a vat, living in a digital environment. That's the ultimate endgame of this line of thought, a digital consciousness in a digital vat. Now, whether a simulated brain is truly the same as a conscious mind is a whole other debate. Philosophy of mind and AI consciousness another hair hole we could jump into, but at the very least, this concept has gone from crazy thought experiment to a guiding vision for some very real science and engineering. Even AI developments play a role here. For instance, to keep a brain in a vat happy, you'd need a very convincing interactive world, essentially an AI-driven simulation, like an ultra-advanced video game engine that can emulate reality or whatever world you want to give the brain.